During my last review, I took some time to talk about romance and the common tropes associated with fan fiction and the common pitfalls of writing a romantic story. I then proceeded to praise the story I was reviewing, Rurik's Fire and Rain, for managing to avoid a good majority of the pitfalls of romantic fiction while still making me care about the romance that was forming. Today's subject, on the other hand, is a story that is, shall we say, more traditional when it comes to romantic ideas in fan fiction. Now, before we start with the review proper, some disclosure is in order that I think is necessary. When I go into these reviews, or really whenever I read fanfiction at all, I do not look at who wrote it first, because I want the story to speak for itself. I'm sure those of you who read books often find yourselves having predetermined expectations on a piece of literature based on the name or maybe even the publisher associated with it. The reason I avoid looking at the name is, as I said, to avoid forming opinions on the story before I've actually started reading it, and also so that I don't form an opinion on a new author's entire body of work based on a single story. After all, a story should be able to stand on its own without a name attached to it, sequels and continuations notwithstanding. I say all this because I want you all to understand that even authors I like aren't above critique. That said, today's subject, Good Ponies Don't, Do They?, was written by Book Player, who I think is an excellent writer with a good grasp of the characters and their relationships and knows how to write some interesting romance stories, especially when it involves a relationship that is already established and has been going on for a while. Heck, the first story reading I did was of his three-chapter story Wet Feathers, which I thought was a pretty enjoyable look at the potential gap that could form between Applejack and Rainbow Dash should the two of them ever get into a relationship. On the surface, GPD ellipses DT question mark should probably fall into the exact same level of enjoyment as it is a story that is cut from the same sort of cloth, just adding in a beta couple and instead focusing on a bit more of an intimate topic. So then, why does it seem to fall short, to the point of blending in with the huge swaths of other underwhelming romance fictions? Well, let's take a quick look at the story and find out. The story follows Applejack and Twilight, who have been dating for several months, having concerns over their relationship after Rainbow Dash comes to Applejack bragging about the fact that she and Rarity did the horizontal monster match after only their second date. Applejack and Twilight, holding more traditional views, see the between-sheet shuffle as something special that should only be done between two ponies who truly love one another, while Rainbow and Rarity hold more liberal views when it comes to carnal relations. However, conversations between the four of them soon start to have them all questioning their ideas and ideals on the matter. And then they all got over it and went on with their lives. The end! I'm not making a joke, that is basically what the fic boils down to, and that's where my major problem with the story comes in, but let's start off with the positives, okay? The characters do feel, for the most part, like the same characters from the show. I stress, for the most part, but again, I'll get into that in a little bit. The story itself does touch on some interesting topics of romance, which, while they would never be addressed in the show itself in a bahillion years, do lend themselves well to fan exploration. Book Player demonstrates his strengths with working with relationships that have already been established by the time the story takes place. In this case, we have Twilight and Applejack who have been dating for months, and while they are shown to care about each other immensely, they're past the point where their relationship seems super shiny and new. So the story immediately avoids the problem and tropes associated with a three-day romance story. Yes, an argument could potentially be made for Rarity and Rainbow going through something like that, but as they point out, they are far more fast and loose when it comes to their relationship, still caring for one another, but not wanting to treat their relationship with the same seriousness that Twilight and Applejack treat theirs. I also appreciate the fact that all four of the characters share their own conversations, talking about the pros and cons of waiting, questioning why they feel the way they feel, about more intimate, romantic inclinations. It gives every character a chance to make their opinion known and allows us to see how each of their opinions affects the others. This is best exemplified in the second chapter when Twilight talks to Rarity, asking her if what she did with Rainbow made her feel special. Rarity responds that it didn't and thus begins to question the validity of her and Rainbow's relationship. And then they talk it out in a single conversation and everything turns out okay. The end!
Okay. Okay, I need to start addressing the problems with this story, because in all honesty, its flaws are directly tied into its strengths. If you couldn't tell by the hints I'd been dropping by this point, the biggest issue I have with the story is its pacing, and that can be attributed to the fact that the story really is too short for its own good. At only three chapters, averaging about 4,500 words a chapter, there just isn't enough time to properly address the kind of issues that are the focal point of this story. This leads to the entire story feeling rushed and the characters drawing their conclusions feeling far too easy. Yes, the conclusions that they come to are overall quite sweet and give you the warm, fuzzy feeling that any ship fic worth its weight in words should be able to elicit, but everything leading up to those moments feels far too short, far too easy. The type of conversations and topics that our main characters discuss in this story are not really that easy to discuss, and at times can be very uncomfortable to talk about in depth. Where does love begin and lust end? How long should you wait before you're sure that you want to give yourself to another pony in that way? What happens if you save yourself for a lover only to discover that, as much as you love them, they don't match your physical needs? These are complicated questions that require a lot of consideration, and the answer that's right for one person isn't necessarily going to be right for another. While I appreciate the amount of varied opinions present in this story, it doesn't change the fact that the conclusions drawn by each of the characters just feels underdeveloped. This is perfectly demonstrated by my above example, where Rarity begins to experience doubt in her and Rainbow's relationship after she feels that rocking the carousel with Rainbow didn't feel very special to her. This happens during the middle of the second chapter. By the end of the second chapter, Rainbow dissuades Rarity's fear and they decide to just keep doing what they're doing because they're sure they care about one another and just because they bumped uglies early in the relationship doesn't mean that they can't make each other feel special. It's an alright resolution and like I said, it makes me go daw and stuff and I'm not the biggest Raridash fan. I just feel like they didn't earn it properly. There is a lot of untapped potential there, and it bothers me that their crisis was solved in half a chapter. The only other really big gripe I have with this story is some of the conversations themselves. They're good conversations, even if I feel they could have been expanded upon, but some of the things the characters say kind of take me out of the story because it just feels so out of character. The earliest example I can think of is Rainbow blatantly stating to Applejack, Rarity and I had sex! at the start of the story. First off, I refuse to believe that Applejack wouldn't catch on to what Rainbow was saying after at least her second innuendo. Secondly, hearing the line come out of Rainbow Dash just completely takes me out of the experience. It wouldn't even really be that bad if the story had at least eased me in first, but this is during the very first conversation in the first chapter. For a story that bills itself as being part of the show's universe, it just sort of takes me out of the experience. Compare that to Fire and Rain, which, while it did have some raunchy dialogue, it took its time to set up its world first, eased us into how these characters acted around one another, established their dynamics, and then started to throw out the occasional crass jokes. This story, on the other hand, due to its length, has to establish a lot off the bat, so when that line comes up, it really catches the reader off guard. It's better near the end of the story, after we've had a chance to acclimate ourselves to what sort of story it is, but just being dropped in like that is disorienting. You can't just jump into an Arctic Ocean and expect not to experience sudden shock. Unless you're a polar bear. Or a penguin. Or another Arctic animal beginning with P. I know how to write jokes. So, all things considered, how does the story hold up? It's tough to say. I wanted to like the story more than I did. The premise is there, there's a good setup, the characters act like themselves, except for all the sexy talk, and it raises some interesting questions about romance and relationships and how different people view them in different ways. But it just doesn't expand upon those ideas and it reaches its conclusions far, far too quickly. If the story were longer, with a few more moments of introspection and consideration, maybe even some outside perspective from ponies that weren't in relationships like Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie, I think the whole thing would have been a much more effective romance story. And where does it fall? Well, it's definitely not a bad story by any stretch of the imagination, it's just a little disappointing and it leaves me wishing that more had been done with its premise. 
In the end, the story gets a great big middling meh from me. I don't regret reading it or anything, but I walked away from the story unimpressed and I have no impulse to reread it again anytime soon. It's a story that had the ability to stand out from the crowd, but ultimately blends in with all the other ship fics out there. If you want a more interesting ship fic, you should totally go and look at my awesome reading of Book Player's Wet Feathers story. <laughs> Shameless self-promotion. I am good at this job. Oh, yes.